Good to have you with us tonight, folks. The state of Ohio has become ground zero for the ideological war in America. Moments ago, NBC News' Chuck Todd moderated a debate on issue two, a hotly contested union-busting bill in Ohio, which is up for repeal two weeks from tonight. This attack on middle-class public workers is the brainchild of freshman Republican Governor John Kasich. Ohio voters gathered 1.3 million signatures to repeal the law earlier this year, and they are gaining momentum for a victory on November 8th. In September, Quinnipiac polling showed a 13-point margin with 51% supporting repeal and 38% against it. Now the supporters of repeal have opened up a 25-point advantage on Ohioans who support Kasich's law. Kasich is on the ropes with this one, and reporters pressed him on the issue in his sinking poll numbers earlier today. Governor, the Quinnipiac poll has come out. It's got SB5 down a lot farther than it was. Your reaction? You know, it's, this is, uh, we're going to keep working. We think this is the right thing to create an environment for cities to uh, to be able to be successful. If issue two fails, do you have a backup plan? I, I never backups? think uh, I never think ahead. I mean, you don't typically comment on polls, but is this one disheartening? Hey, you know, um, do I seem disheartened? I mean, I'm doing my job. And the poll is showing an increasing uh, in opposition with pretty much almost every demographic group opposed. I mean, how do you persuade minds or change the, those numbers at this point? Oh, you just work as hard as you can. Try to explain it. You know, you don't you don't quit. I mean, if I'm uh, you know if I'm in a golf game and I'm down six holes with seven to play, I try to play harder. Well, Governor, you're not in the fairway on this one. Kasich isn't the only politician taking heat on issue two. It gets even better. Enter Willard Mitt Romney. Romney's six-year campaign to become president of the United States made a stop at a Republican pro-issue two propaganda call center in Cincinnati this morning. Romney glad-handed the telemarketers and mugged for the camera. After the planned photo op, Romney stopped to talk with reporters on this. It's great to be here in Ohio today. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not speaking about the, uh, the particular ballot issues. Uh, those are under the people of Ohio, but I certainly support the effort of the governor to reign in the scale of government. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm not terribly familiar with the two ballot initiatives, but I'm, I'm, I'm certainly supportive of the Republican Party's effort here. Hold it right there. You mean to tell me Mitt Romney goes to Ohio, enters a yes on issue two call center and doesn't have an opinion on the most important issue facing Ohio voters? This is another classic Romney flip flop. Earlier this year, the former governor of Massachusetts playing around on Twitter tweeted his support for the Kasich law. Romney wrote, my friends in Ohio are fighting to defend crucial reforms the state has put in place to limit the power of union bosses and keep taxes low. I stand with John Kasich. You mean to tell me he couldn't say that today? He went all the way to Ohio to let people know that he doesn't have a spine? I mean, think about this. He wants to be president of the United States. I'm not terribly familiar with the, the two ballot initiatives. Wisconsin and Ohio have been all over the news. Workers' rights under attack all over America with these six radical governors that we have pointed out night after night on this program. But the mister, he just doesn't quite have an answer at that time. Now, that's a pretty strong statement on Twitter. But face to face, Romney is milk toast. Right wing bloggers, they're all over it. Freedom Works instantly jumped on Romney for not showing a spine today. Texas Governor Rick Perry, like a shark, he smelled blood in the water and released this statement. As a true conservative, I stand with Governor Kasich in promoting Senate Bill 5 for fiscal responsibility and job creation in Ohio. Perry not uh, as dumb as some people think. Perry has Romney dead on the rights on this issue. Romney is not a true conservative or a true leader. Romney has attacked President Obama for not showing leadership time and time again. But when he gets a chance to stand up for the Republican ideology, he takes a pass. And in the same interview, he told a reporter, you know, I really got to win Ohio if we're going to win the presidential election. Really? So let's see. What we have is no conviction, uh, really, across the board, never convincing on any issue. And Romney waffles. And this is why conservatives don't like this guy. This is actually what makes, I think, the Democrats a little bit nervous because he can confuse voters and he might be the guy to trip up President Obama. I believe that his campaign is running like a dartboard. 
dartboard mentality. Wherever it lands today, well, that looks pretty good. What do you say we try that? But I think this is a telling day for Mitt Romney and for his opponents. they got to jump on this. Get your cell phones out. I want to know what you think. Since he hasn't made up his mind, maybe we should help Mitt Romney out a little bit. Should Senate Bill 5 become the law of the land in Ohio? Text A for yes. Text B for no to 622-639. You can always go to our blog at ed.msnbc.com, and we'll bring you the results later on in the show. Now, issue two. I, I, I mean, this crosses all party lines in Ohio. Cincinnati conservative radio and television talk show host Bill Cunningham produced a video supporting a no vote on issue two. Let's take a look. Many months ago, right there sat the governor of Ohio, John Kasich. And John Kasich told me, the rock rib Republican conservative governor of this state, that he would not meet with the labor unions. He was wrong in not meeting with state employees, especially those in labor unions. From my perspective, those affected by governmental decisions need to have a place at the bargaining table to determine the outcome of what's being discussed. I urge you to vote no on state issue two. Wow. Joining me tonight, Bill Cunningham, the conservative radio and television talk show host, has a daytime TV syndicated program. Congratulations. Ed, how are you? I'm doing fine. You and I don't agree, but I think you're a straight talker. I think we're Americans. And one thing that I told Kasich in February and March is that sit down with those you disagree with. It does two things. It tests your own validity. You test what they have to say against your beliefs. And secondly, you make them feel as if they're part of the solution instead of part of the problem. He didn't do that. Kasich told me no. And uh, John's my friend. He was my friend before S Senate Bill 5. I'm going to vote for him when he runs for office, likely again. I introduced him at election rallies in October before he was elected. I was there for John. He's a good man. This is a mistake he's making. And the mistake is this. This bill says it has collective begging and not collective bargaining. Let's say you and your lovely wife or me and my lovely wife are in divorce court and we don't agree on the custody of the kids. How would you feel if your wife went up to the bench, put the robe on and ruled in your case? That is what Ohio is. At the end of the day, if there's not an agreement, the position of management is imposed upon the workers, irrespective of an independent judgment. Why is he picking on, of all people, public heroes, firefighters, people that go into burning homes to save lives, yet he won't tax the wealthiest Ohioans? Ohioans who have money, if you lived in Ohio, you'd be with me, uh, pay the great bulk of the taxes. The top 1% pay 40%. I only make 25% of the money in this country. Taxpayers who are That's successful. That's a great right-wing bullet point. I give you credit it's on also, that. One. It's also the truth. But it's, but it's also the graph that's out there. The red line, I mean, the income for the top 2% across America has gone up 300% over the last 30 years. The average wage true. earners are that's right true, down too. there. They're, I mean, outsourcing has a lot to do with it. But Kasich's picking on the middle class, is he not? He, he's not picking on the middle class. He's picking on collective bargained employees because, let's face it, they support Democrats financially and otherwise. I would say to you, Ed Schultz, what if Republicans, like under Nixon, Teamsters, voted Republican? Do you think Kasich would be doing that? So this is as much a going after their infrastructure sure it as it is anything else. Sure it is. If they can take down the unions, if they can bust the unions, they can, they can knock that. Democrats. Uh, yeah, they can knock that fundraising. You, you know how the games play. The games play that way. About seventy percent of this bill is good, and I agree with seventy percent of the bill is good. Such as a union worker ought to be able to say in writing whether their money goes to a pack of a labor union. Uh, when, when you have collective bargaining benefits to deal with uh, public insurance benefits, and this says the public insurance benefits for the worker can't be any worse or better than management. Do you Good think, stuff in the do, bill. You, do you think there's a lot of conservatives in Ohio that think the way you do on yes, this I'm, issue? Uh, Senator Bill Seitz is my buddy from uh, Western Hamilton County, conservative. I spoke to him today. He laid out six or seven great things in the bill that probably Democrats would agree to, but we can't agree to collective begging instead of collective bargaining. That's the heart and soul of the agreement. So Republicans are being, in a sense, fair-minded in Ohio, saying you can't do this to public employees, you can't do this to collective bargaining, no. but they like the idea that they've had a governor that's gone after the Republic, the Democratic establishment when it comes to organizing, social networking, boots on the ground, and raising money for Democratic candidates. But he went too far this time. He, he went, this is more extreme than Wisconsin. I had a Mark Monahan today on my radio show. I've had on the FOP. Cops and firefighters vote Republican in Ohio about 70%. 
they're never going to vote for another Republican. These are the people that put Kasich in power. The NRA types put Kasich there. Yeah. And when people like me and Bill Seitz say a bridge too far, that's why it's not going to be defeated because of people like your philosophy. It's going to be defeated. But if he's your of friend, why'd you weigh in on this? It's, I mean, it, well, I tell you why, Ed. I think I mean, friends, this is politically going to hurt him. It hurts him a lot. And, and I think why, why I did it, friends need to tell friends when they're wrong. Hopefully my opinion has more value because I was a Kasich supporter before, and I'm going to vote for Kasich the next time. But, but you're campaigning against him. I mean, this on is... On this issue. Okay. But what, on, one issue. On this issue. Not on the rest of the stuff. On most of what he does with jobs. And another thing he did, $8 billion deficit, he bridged it in July without affecting Senate Bill 5 at all. Senate Bill 5 was kicked not affected. He kicked the can down the road, though, with some pretty hey, I think tricky... He, he well, kicked the can down do the that. road with some tricky accounting. Politicians do that. Yeah. But John Kasich... But, I mean, shows... he's not a now-pay-for-it-guy. No. He was he's not He's a on good that man. Issue. He's a good man. He may be a nice guy. How about 96, 97, 98? He worked with the Newtster and with Clinton, <laughs> right? Balanced budget. So this guy is uniquely positioned, but on this one issue, I stand, believe was, it or not, with Ed Schultz. What, okay, was he trying to outdo Scott Walker and some of these other Republican governors out there? I mean, this is a one-upmanship kind of deal, is it? Well, police and fire are uh, not exempt. Uh, they want to say they're exempt with safety, but that's not true. At the end of the day, if the management position is imposed without an independent arbitrator, it's collective begging and not collective bargaining, and my friend John is wrong. I've got some other guests I want to get in here, but I want you to come back because you and I are going to have a discussion about the jobs bill. I hate the jobs no, bill. You, well, I, I'm going to make you love the jobs bill because putting people to work in this country is what it is all about. If the, if the jobs bill did that, I'd be in favor of it. All right. We'll come back and talk to you. Bill Cunningham, good to have you with us tonight. Thanks so much. Now let's turn to Ohio State Senator Nina Turner and Chris Redfern, chairman of the Ohio Democratic Party. Great to have both of you with us tonight. A debate just moments ago concluded in Ohio on this issue, issue number two. And State Senator Keith Faber said this about public employees. I want your reaction. Here it is. You know, most private sector employees don't get a lifetime guaranteed pension that in many cases is, has a value of in excess of a million dollars. It's time to level the playing field. It's time to put the taxpayers at the table. And that's why these discussions are important. Senator Turner, what, if, what about that? Is that true? Uh, thank you, Ed. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous that we would lower the bar and consider that leveling the playing field. I mean, to send people to the poorhouse, their families, not allow them to be able to support their families. I don't know what the private sector equivalent is to a police officer or a firefighter or a teacher. But what I do know is that our men and women, whether they're firefighters, police officers, social workers or teachers and other public sector workers, they provide a needed <laughs> service. They deserve their benefits and they deserve their wages. So Senator Faber is uh, delusional in that. You don't lower the bar. Private sector workers should question why they are treated so inadequately and not question why we treat public sector workers fairly. Let's talk about the national scene. Here, here's Mitt Romney in Ohio today. And, and Chris, can President Obama beat Mitt Romney in Ohio? Absolutely. And, and when Willie Cunningham and I are agreeing on something, you know we're right, Ed. <laughs> The fact of the matter is I'm, I'm a proud Democrat. I'm proud to be chairman of the Democratic Party here in Ohio. But it's not about me and it's not about Democrats. It's about Democrats and Republicans. It's about moms and dads. It's about your neighbors. It's about the people you sit next to at a basketball game. And it's about that call that's made at 2 o'clock in the morning on a cold February night and the deputy that goes out in that car to make our neighborhoods safe. How much is that deputy worth? What is the salary we should pay that deputy? Yeah. I expect my local elected officials to have a say when sitting at the table bargaining with that deputy collectively, transparently, in front of the public. That's the law today. And under Senate Bill 5, as you just heard from Bill Cunningham, those kinds of protections would be stripped away in lieu of backroom deals. It wouldn't be what you know, knew. It would be who you knew to get that yeah. job. Senator, That's not what Ohio has been about for the last 30 years. Yeah. And, to suggest, and to suggest that, that balancing the budget on the back of the middle class is somehow going to make Ohio 
Ohio stronger. We've seen that in other states. It has not worked. Senator Turner, do you want to see President Obama get involved in this? There you see Mitt Romney was there today, although he waffled on the issue. Is it important for Senate, for President Obama to be involved in this? Well, Ed, we're saying he's waffling. Maybe it's that Governor Romney is considering coming to the righteous side. How about that? In regards <laughs> to our president, he certainly has his hands full right now with the jobs bill. Ed, as you know, the unemployment rate here in Ohio is, is 9.1 percent. We have got to put people to work. So I think the president can certainly do both. He was just here in Ohio a few weeks ago on a bridge, talking about a bridge too far, and talking about how not only that, bi that bridge needed to be repaired, but also the numbers of folks that would be put sure. to work. So the president is right on the mark right now, Ed. He needs to continue to hammer home for all Americans, all Ohioans, that putting folks back to work in this country right. is the greatest need of this hour. And issue two is all about that and more in Ohio. We'll continue to cover it. Ohio State Senator Nina Turner and Chris Redfern, thanks for your time tonight.